a couple that plays together stays together. Do you agree or disagree with this statement? Welcome to Passion Unlimited Podcast. I am your host, psychotherapist, author, and founder of Fearless Love, Gianni Adamo. Couples need their partner's attention, affection, humor, and support. Either you are turning towards each other or turning away from one another. Turning towards one another is the basis of emotional connection, romance, passion, and a good sex life. Whether you are aiming to conquer a quarantine resolution or reignite the passion in your relationship, in today's episode, I will be discussing how couples turning towards one another to have more fun can be more intimately familiar with one another's inner worlds and enjoy an increase in passion in their marriage. So anyways, today we know that, um, you know, a lot of couples that come into therapy are kind of stuck in roles and in routines that are kind of getting them not the fullness of, that they want in their relationship. So sometimes you get stuck in being the peacemaker, the nurturer, or maybe just the provider role, and you kind of are, again, stuck there, and there's not a lot of flexibility. So while healthy relationships have a measure of safety, predictability, and reliability, on the other hand, it also has a measure of uncertainty, spontaneity, excitement, and fun. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to talk about bringing some of that fun and spontaneity and excitement into your relationship. And even now in this pandemic, this is a really exciting topic to talk about because a lot of the couples who are thriving in this time are those who have actually turned toward each other for comfort to ease the anxiety of the uncertainties and the unknowns. But they're also finding not only comfort, but fun. All this ad added time that we have by not having to drive to offices, um, by not having all those social groups and meetings and sports that we would go to, all that now is time back to the family back and time back to you. So the people who are thriving right now have capitalized in using this time wisely to really provide quality time for each other or for themselves. All right, so I actually wanted to share with you guys today um, some of the things, okay, so before I start sharing that, okay, so one of the things that I ask my couples and even individuals who come in for therapy is to create a, a list of 10 things that they find exciting and fun. It doesn't sound like a hard request, but unbelievably so for a great deal of people, that is like such a hard task. They cannot figure out 10 things to do with themselves that would be fun and exciting. So that's part of the homework assignments that I give them. And usually people have five that they can easily or somewhat easily figure out. And then from that, they'll have to do some research. So they'll go on Google, they will go on, um, uh, a whole bunch of other sites, maybe even like Facebook, they will go on Meetup. I will also recommend that you can do like Groupon and find activities and fun things in your local area that you may want to check out. And maybe some of these things are things that you've had interest in your youth um, or in your young adult years, but as you got older, you know, life gets in the way and you've kind of lost that time for fun and spontaneity and just to, you know, just to do things that make you feel comfortable and, and, and good inside. Okay. So with that, normally we come up with 10 things each and in couples therapy, normally I'll, I'll ask them not to share their list at home and to create their list separately. So I'm going to ask you to do the same. So being that we are here on a, re on a relationship reboot series, this is the perfect time for this. I want you to do the same. Create your own list of 10 things or more. And I want your partner, if he's willing or she's willing, to also create a list of 10 things or more. 
and use the the places that I've mentioned in the internet that you can actually get some good ideas. You could also get ideas from your friends and see what they're doing. That's also a fun thing to just check in with them, like what kind of fun activities are they doing with their family, with their husband, with their children, um, with their partners. All right, so I wanna share actually some stuff that I've had couples work on and this is some of their responses. So in this example here, I, this is a couple who have been together and married for 10 years. And the husband came back with his list and some of the things on his items were, he loves concerts. He enjoys concerts very much. He likes local concerts, like at local bars. So like live music, as well as traveling throughout the country to listen to some of his favorite bands. He also likes to surf. He enjoys volunteering. He likes uh, kite surfing, and he definitely enjoys watching movies at home. And prior to the pandemic and post the pandemic, he will continue to enjoy them outside of the home at movie theaters. He enjoys playing basketball, and he likes bowling, and he likes to bike. His wife, on the other hand, wrote down some things for herself that would be fun and exciting. And that would, she, she wrote down, she enjoys day trips and road trips. She enjoys baking and cooking. She enjoys watching a movie and cuddling, and shopping, painting. She also likes to snorkel and wants to try to do more kayaking and biking. She likes to learn things that are new and different. Um, so she left that open for the possibilities. She also likes to try new activities. She likes poetry, museums, comedy clubs, and basketball. So from there, what I normally ask the couples is to circle the items are, that are similar that your partner said or listed just circle the ones that are similar. And then that means that you guys are matching on those things. And then the items that are different, then I ask them, are you willing to try this out? And in most cases, almost every single person is so willing to try out their partner's activities. In this situation, the husband really loves concerts, but the wife does not like crowds and does not like loud music. Doesn't like being stuck in a place where she cannot just like go home. So in this instance, she would be willing to do everything else on this list except for the concerts. So in that case, the husband, when we have times for concerts again, because right now in the pandemic, all we, we have local restaurants that ha have um, musicians that come in, but we're not really seeing the big venue concerts yet until probably 2021 when this pandemic is kind of like under control. So anyways, so she's granted him permission that he can go do this with his male friends. And, you know, she does not have to participate in that. Okay, so um, another couple in their list. This couple is engaged, they're dating, and they've been together about three years. And his, no, her list is she likes um, road trips roller skating she likes to go to drive-in movies and again this is this is recent stuff so these are pandemic you know pandemic proof stuff drive-in movies sunset beach picnics so if you don't live by the beach that's okay then you can go to a local park or a local lake um, or just a pretty area or maybe even your backyard maybe you have a beautiful lush you know backyard with trees and flowers so you might want to do the picnic in your backyard she wants to go to a bed and breakfast. She would like to go wine tasting. She would like to do some hot air balloon rides. She would like to um, go to museums and also do the laser tag. Her fiance would like to do more golf. He wants to have game nights, stand up paddle boarding, cook for each other romantic themes. He wants comedy clubs, clubs, he wants to visit natural lakes and do horseback riding. 
And here, once again, they matched in several things. Plus, he was completely shocked <laughs> that she wanted to do so many different things because in the relationship, he's an extrovert. He's the extra extrovert and she's the intra introvert. So she's always like happy to lucky at home and she's like, doesn't have to say too much in the conversation, you know. So the fact that she came up with hot air balloon rides, wine tasting, bed and breakfast, like, and all of this stuff, drive-in movies and roller skating, he was like, no way. He was so happy because he's usually the one coming up with crazy ideas of what to do and how to be exciting and keep the excitement going in the relationship. So this is part of the fun. When you create these lists, you're going to discover a part of your partner and your spouse or your girlfriend or your boyfriend that you haven't discovered yet. And this is just how, that is why this is so important to do these things. Okay, so I wanted to share one more couple, um, and that's the empty nester. So the empty nester, I work with clients as well who have been either just dating to you know empty nesters and beyond. And of course, I work with the divorcing and the divorce to help you recover through all of this. So the empty nester, they decided they wanted to learn Italian. Post pandemic, they want to do more traveling, and now with the pandemic still with us. They're going to do more of the local traveling, so road trips, um, get some Airbnb rentals or just some nice resorts um, that they can still go to and enjoy themselves and still keep social distancing. The husband came up with this one, which blew the wife away, and is <laughs> he wants to try some salsa dancing lessons, and she was blown away because he was like, all oh, work, 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 work. And like the fact that he wants to learn how to salsa dance was like, just blew that out of the water. And she was so excited. Um, they also decided together actually that they wanted to read more books on baseball and to travel more around baseball. And that's because one of their sons plays baseball for college. And so that has been a theme for them, you know, for decades or now, um, you know, raising a child who's, you know, now hopefully getting into the, professionals to play baseball. They also added their, they love were out biking and want to do more hiking together and enjoy their beach house more, uh, more often. So once you create these lists and once you come together, figure out what you match on and then figure out if you are open to the things that your spouse or your partner has mentioned that's not on your list. And usually you're going to probably find like 80% of the stuff that's been mentioned you guys are open to. So now let's say 80% of the list has now increased from 10 to 25, excuse me. No, so sorry. 10 to maybe uh, 15 to 16, 17 items that you guys can now list of things that you can do together. And from that bunch of stuff that you've put together on this list, you can now create your date nights. Hello, yeah, date nights. It's important that if, you grow, if you're going to keep a healthy long-term marriage and relationship where you're both feeling fulfilled and happy and excited, that you keep the dates going every week. I recommend every week. I know when you have small children, that's not the case. You have small children and you need to get babysitters. If you can do it every other week, that would be optimal. If not, if, and for couples who, and if not, obviously at least once a month to be able to go out and get dressed up or do something fun and exciting. For me, date nights are around an activity, an exciting and fun activity that you will then wrap a meal around. So it's not just going out to have a dinner and be bored to death because now you've been doing 10 years of having dinners and just looking at each other and having nothing to say because we know that's part of the problem <laughs> of being in a long-term relationship. You kind of get into this monotonous place and it's stuck in your roles. And then if you're not problem solving and strategizing, you don't know what else to talk about or the children. So I, those are topics that you cannot discuss <laughs> you're not discussing children you're not strategizing you are not uh, problem solving this is really about you letting your hair down and having fun and enjoying each other's company okay 
So once you get yourselves, you have your list. Now you have like probably like 15, 16, 17 items that you can choose from to create your date nights. I want you to start alternating who sets up the dates. I always ask the men to lead in this. So the husband or the boyfriend, you need to prepare the first week's um, date. You guys will come into agreement what nights and what days are good for you guys. And you know, for some couples, you know, the date nights will be Sunday morning um, or Saturday morning because of the ways the schedules are. And some of you, it will be on a Monday night. Some of you will be a Friday night. So figure out your schedules and figure out which two or three days during the week are the most flexible for you guys to honor as your date nights. And then from there, um, I want the man to be the first one to initiate, pick out a date, make sure that your partner is available, and then plan something. Plan from those activities, pick one, make the arrangements, let your partner know. Um, if you wanna make it a surprise, which you don't need to, but if you do make it into a surprise, just be sure to tell your partner how to dress. That is very important because women always wanna know that they are dressed appropriately for the event. So if you're taking her boating, if you're renting a boat for Saturday and you want her to be, you know, relaxed and you need to let her know she needs to bring, she needs to be wearing her bathing suit and bring some change of clothes uh, and probably just like flip flops. That's all she needs. And obviously you're going to handle the food, whether you're going to get yourself anchored to, you know, to a restaurant on the water or do you need to prep a picnic? and bring maybe a bottle of wine, whatever you need to do, you <laughs> are in charge of that and you're not asking your partner for feedback because you know what he or she likes. Um, and so I want you to take care of all the details because part of the problem too comes with a partner who then keeps asking their partner um, for permission, for ideas, and then by the time you're done, the partner who was being asked 20 million questions is like, I should have done this myself because you were asking me so many questions and it just took away from her time and her day. So just once you have this list, you know that she or he will be happy with any of these things that you plan. So just go for it, take a risk. Um, and usually these risks can pan out. And when they don't pan out, because there have been times when, you know, lightning and thunder <laughs> and rain ruin your parade. So you can't take out your wife on a boat for Saturday afternoon because it's lightning and thunder outside. So there's gotta be then a plan B. So you figure out, let's do something simple. And then for the next time you are going to do the date night, then you, you know, bring that back again. All right, so having flexibility and also learning to just laugh about things that just aren't going the way we plan them is the best remedy. All right, so I wanna spend a few more minutes on now creating and giving you guys some ideas on team building activities that you can do. And I got these from um, an article I read from Focus on the Family in Canada, and they, are using, these activities are using the principles from researcher and marriage expert, John Gottman. And basically these are games that will help you and your spouse to continue to have open and honest communication to once again, increase intimacy, connection, and passion. And again, these things can be done at home when you are on your date nights, when you are out to a restaurant, it could be done daytime, nighttime, anytime, it doesn't matter. Just find some time to play some of these games together. You don't have to like schedule it. Some, some of you will have to schedule things, but if you can just seize the moment, you could even do this while one of you is cooking or the other one is uh, washing dishes. Just, you can do this anytime, just figure it out. Okay, so the first um, one is, uh, two truths and a lie. And here we're going to incorporate enhancing your love map, which means getting more familiar with your spouse's personality, 
their concerns, their history and values. And all of that's gonna help you become more equipped to handle life's ups and downs. So with two truths and a lie, you're gonna consider yourself and two things that are true about you. And one thing that is false about you, and you're gonna share that with your spouse. And you're gonna see if the spouse can pinpoint the lie. So of course, it's gotta be a little tricky or it's gotta be you know, something that's not so obvious. Um, but you're gonna be surprised that there are many things, just like I shared earlier, that your partner did not know. So in this example, for me, if I was playing this, I would say, I have traveled to Jerusalem in Israel. I have traveled to Buenos Aires, Argentina. And I have traveled to Lake Como, Italy. Two of them are true. One of them is a lie. So I'm not going to tell you the truth here on this podcast, but if you want to email me or, or just put, put it in the comments there on YouTube or on the Facebook group, feel free to enter what you believe is the lie here for me. And I, I will absolutely give you the answer then. All right. So the next game is going to be the name game. And here we're going to nurture find fondness and admiration. Consider your spouse's admirable qualities. So your objective here is to point them out, to grow fond, to grow the fondness and nurture strengths, sincerely compliment your partner and everything and anything that they do. Okay, so with the name game, this is kind of fun. You're gonna take each letter of your spouse's name and you're going to create an ad or find an adjective that is complimentary to them. And if you really wanna go for like more points and the gold here, you can use their entire name from middle, excuse me, first, middle, and last and find adjectives, for adjectives, positive adjectives that describe them. Okay, so here, for my name, I came up with J would be jazzy, I would be illuminating, a is amicable, N is natural, N is nourishing, and Y is youthful. So when you spell that out, it's Gianni, and those are the adjectives that I thought were appropriate for me. If you don't have a partner right now, then go ahead and you can do this for yourself. It's kind of fun, and it's, and it's kind of cute. Okay, so the third game is to turn towards your spouse. Um, in a game of high and low. Here, basically, you want to gaze into your partner's eyes. And if you want to hold their hand, you can, if they allow you. And I want, I want to recommend that this should actually be done, this checking in every single day, Monday through Friday, 20 minutes a day. And you want to share your highs and lows. And you want to stay focused. You want to be attentive. You want to use active listening, which says you actually are mirroring back some of the stuff that you're hearing. You're saying, uh-huh, mm-hmm, okay. This is all empathic listening. The purpose of that is it keeps you present with your partner and away from problem solving, which is so difficult for so many people. Okay, so here for those 20 minutes, each of you, Go back and forth and sharing your peaks and your, and your valleys of your day. Especially for the woman, it's very important for her to share this and for the husband or the guy to listen. Just giving your partner that 20 minutes for her to express herself. It's gonna calm her. It's gonna help her to come back to, her, to being grounded again, especially if she had a really stressful day. So it's a way of de-stressing for us women. Okay, so that is a beautiful gift, that 20 minute checking in. Another game that you guys can play would be the blind mind, minds. And this is to allow your partner to influence you. It's important to be able to increase our trust and make sure that each of us is trustworthy. And trust then allows for a shared power in our relationship rather than a dictatorship. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to take turns blindfolding each other, and then you're going to create an obstacle course in your living room 
So you're going to scatter random things and objects on the floor. And by using verbal cues to help your partner dodge those lines, you're going to be practicing listening skills. And you're going to be relying on your spouse's influence to help you to gradually grow more comfortable in sharing power. So this is a really important one because it's, it's, um, it takes us off into that toxic world when we don't share power and we don't have trust. All right, in our last um, activity that I would recommend for fun and to enhance your uh, passion is to create a vision for your marriage. This is an activity that you can actually do once a year, either at your anniversary or at the beginning of the year when you're doing New Year's resolutions. You can do your couple's resolutions. You might wanna start with strategizing and brainstorming and maybe even writing down your marriage uh, mission statement. And to this, you could just be doing something as simple as committing to joining a community or spiritual group or volunteering together. Then I want you to work out some specific strategies on how you're going to accomplish this together and outlining what you will be doing and not be doing to accomplish that goal. So maybe you guys are going to want to learn a new language together this year, or maybe you're ready to start a family, or maybe you want to go volunteer at an animal shelter. You will, um, maybe what you wanna say, the part of the strategy here is that you will not be visiting a bar during the week, right? For individuals and couples who realize that they're drinking too much, they're going to eliminate going to bars during the week and they'll just do it like once on, on the weekend or, or, or just on the weekend. And so what happens is that when we start sharing the same vision, we start working together as a couple and that increases meaning and teamwork um, in our relationship. And of course, if we are consistent with building this team and having fun, and just having um, spontaneous time to go do things that are exciting or new and learning th new things, all of that helps us to keep our, the flame ablaze. So as you guys are aware, I am uh, working on a relationship reboot series this summer of 2020. And if you are wanting to go from surviving to thriving in your love, life, and relationship, please subscribe to Passion Unlimited Podcast through any of the podcast networks. You can also subscribe through YouTube um, under Fearless Love. My um, page on YouTube is called Fearless Love, or you can find me, Gianni Adamo, and subscribe once you get to my page. You can find me on social media as well. I am on Instagram under Gianni Adamo. And there is a Facebook group. You can communicate with me there. And that's Passion Unlimited Podcast. And you can find me also through my website at fearlesslove.net. And there, if you are interested in a free 15-minute consultation, just click on the link. And I'll be happy to speak with you, support your efforts and evolving and growing and bringing more passion and fun in your relationship. So until next time, 